Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Hi, welcome to Power Tip 32 and 33. In this Power Tip, we're going to consider the SEPIC power stage. Uh, SEPIC is typically used when you need to either step up or step down the input voltage. Uh, here we're showing a, a typical SEPIC power stage. It can be comprised of a coupled inductor, as we're shown here, or it can actually be two separate inductors. The power supply works by controlling the conduction angle of, of Q2. When Q2 is turned on, um, the input voltage is applied to the primary of the coupled inductor that we're showing here, and it also is reflected to the secondary of the coupled inductor. The voltage on the transformer goes negative, and during the on time recharges the, the coupling capacitor. When the um, transistor is turned off, the inductance of the coupled inductor here drives the drain of the MOSFET high. The drain of the MOSFET continues high until D1 conducts. At that point, energy in the coupled inductor is delivered to the output. And it, it's interesting in, in that both the secondary current of the coupled inductor and the primary current are delivered to the output voltage. Uh, obviously, the secondary gets connected to the output just through D1, and the primary current flows through the coupling capacitor and then it, through D1 into the output. Uh, this topology can use either a coupled inductor, as we're showing here, or two separate inductors. The coupled inductor is favored over two separate inductors because it, it will be smaller and it will be less costly than two separate inductors. In many power supplies, people try to get the best coupling between windings on the magnetics in their power supply as they can, and sometimes that, that creates a problem in the rest of the circuit. In this slide, we're going to take a look at the voltage across the leakage inductance of the coupled inductor. So we are showing the two cases of when the MOSFET is on and when the MOSFET is off. So when the MOSFET is on, the input voltage is applied to the magnetizing inductance of the coupled inductor. The input voltage is reflected to the secondary here. And the voltage across these two components in the secondary is made of two components. There's a DC voltage that is present on the AC coupling capacitor, and then there's an AC voltage also. And so the DC voltage across the transformer is fixed equal to the input voltage. And then as you look at it, both in the on case and the off case, the voltage across the leakage is just equal to the voltage across the coupling capacitor. It's very evident in the bottom case when the MOSFET is off. In that case, you have input voltage, you have the voltage across the magnetized inductance of the transformer, you have AC voltage on, on the coupling capacitor, and then you have the same voltage across the transformer in the reverse direction. And so basically that, that cancels out the voltage that's on the transformer, and you see you just have the coupling capacitor in series with the leakage inductance of the transformer. So we're going to take a look at two different approaches for this coupled inductor. In the first case, we're going to operate this circuit with a low leakage inductance inductor. It's an MSD 1260 by a Coilcraft, and for a 47 microhenry magnetized inductance, this inductor only has about half a microhenry of leakage inductance. The second case we're going to take a look at is this MSC1278, which is almost identical from Coilcraft. It has very similar on resistances, very similar core areas, but it is wound completely different and has significant amount of leakage inductors. It has 14 microhenries on leakage inductors, almost 30% of the magnetizing inductance. And so here we'll take a look at the current waveforms in the input of the power supply. The one on the left is the loosely coupled inductor. The one on the right is the tightly coupled inductor. In both cases, the DC current in the inductor is 
equal to the line right here and over here. These are the same scales. But in the loosely coupled case, you can see that the input current has significantly less AC current than the tightly coupled case. Again, th this is because the voltage across the coupling capacitor shows up across the leakage inductance and creates a large AC current. And so this AC current has two impacts on the power supply. The first one is it significantly increases the EMI. Uh, you're going to have to employ a lot more EMI filter on the tightly coupled inductor than you will on the loosely coupled inductor. And it increases the RMS currents within the circuit. And this, as we see in this next slide, has a negative impact on the efficiency of the power supply. Again, we took our test circuit, ran it with the tightly coupled inductor, and then replaced it with the loosely coupled inductor and measured efficiency. And you see it at high loads, we had almost a 2% degradation in efficiency due to the high circulating currents from the tightly coupled case. So this concludes this power tips. If you'd like to see some more of the power tips, take a look at the power management design line and search for power tips. Here's a link to the power management design line, or you can click on the link to all articles in the video description of this video. Thanks.